Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to um, condense logarithmic expressions. So what I did is I wrote up here, I wrote some up top, I wrote the common properties of logarithms to help us condense. And what I did is I wrote the expanded form of a logarithm and then I wrote what the equivalent expression for that is in the condensed format. So you can see I have one example here, another logarithm here, another example there. So I kind of kind of ran out a little bit, got tight on space, um, but I put each logarithm. So this would be basically your product property, your quotient property, and here would be basically your pro power property. And in another video, you know, I explain how those kind of relate and they're similar to uh, the rules of, rules of exponents and so forth. But the main important thing, the really kind of idea, and we're going to use all of these properties here, um, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to condense our logarithmic expression. You can see that these expressions are separated by addition and subtraction. And what we're going to do is we want to um, condense, the, condense these into one single logarithmic expression. All right. So to do that, um, first of all, if you can see here, by using uh, my addition property, when I have two logarithms separated by addition, I can condense them into the product of our two values of the logarithms, x and y. So in this case, I have log base 4 of 20 plus log base 4 of 3. Well, therefore, that's going to equal log base 4 of 20 times 3. Now, for some of these, I'll break them down you know, step by step. And some of these, I'm going to run out of a little bit of a space as well. Um, however, that can simplify now to the log base 4 of 60. Now, we always want to see if we can simplify this a little bit further. Some of these I chose we will be able to simplify. Some you'll be not. Um, we know that 4 raised to the third power is 64, but I can't really raise, simplify this any other further uh, to be able to evaluate. So I'm just going to leave it as log base 4 of 60. In the next problem here, now you can see we have division. So to do this next problem, when you have terms of logarithms separated by um, addition, you can rewrite them as the product. So when you have terms separated by subtraction, we can rewrite them as the quotient of one single logarithm. So this would be log base 2 of 18 divided by 3. Well, 18 divided by 3 is going to be 6. So therefore, I can rewrite this as log base 2 of 6. And again, that's not something I can simplify because 2 um, doesn't raise to a given num power to give me 6. So therefore, I'm just going to leave my answer as is. So hopefully, ladies and gentlemen, you just kind of get an idea of what we're doing. The main important thing is taking these expressions and condensing them down to one logarithmic expression. All right. So now I'm going to start incorporating um, another rule. And that other rule is the power rule. And what the power rule basically states is if you have a logarithm, if you have a value that's being multiplied by your logarithm, you can, in front of it, you can basically rewrite that as your power of your logarithm. So for it, in this case, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply that power rule for each of my powers. So therefore, I have log of x squared plus log of y cubed plus log of z to the fourth. Now, also notice that the logarithms do not have a base in this case. Uh, my logarithms does, does not have a case. But um, fear not, when your logarithms does not have a base, oh, I forgot something. That's supposed to be x plus, this is supposed to be 2x minus. Let's do it like that. There you go. Um, so when they don't have a base, just remember, if your logarithm doesn't have a base, then we can assume it's base 10. Now, that's not going to affect our, um, that's not really going to affect our condensing. But it is important that we can only apply these rules when the base is exactly the same. Okay? So I didn't, I didn't do any examples here because there's really not much to do for it. But if you have a logarithmic expression that you're trying to condense and the bases are different, for instance, if I had like 5 and 10 or something or 5 and 2, you couldn't follow these rules of um, order operations. So if there's not a base given, we assume that it's going to be 10. Well, now I have addition and I have addition. So I can rewrite this as one single logarithm as the product of my three values. So therefore, I just write this as log of, oh, let's write this together. I don't need parentheses. x squared, y cubed, z to the fourth. Okay. Now, I forgot to write this one in. But in the next example, now we have natural logarithm, ln. And natural logarithm is the same thing. Uh, I don't have any room here. Well, I guess I can write here. So log base e of x is the same thing as ln of x. And basically what that means is, ln of x just tells us that it's going to be have a base e. All right. So again, this is going to be the exact same thing. Nothing's really changing. It's just telling us our base is now going to be e. But we're going to apply the same operations. 
So in this case, though, if I'm applying, now I'm applying this quotient to 2. So you've got to be really careful. You're not just applying the power or the x. So I'm going to bring that up. And then here, I don't have a value. OK. So now let's rewrite this as ln of 3. Uh, sorry. So that's going to be 3x squared, which is now going to give me 9x plus ln of 4x and then minus ln of 2x. Now, what gets everybody confused here is they start want, they want to again use you know, this quotient rule. Well, we can't separate the 2x minus the 1. So that is an expression all of on itself. So since that's within parentheses, that, that's going to remain there. That's what actually we're going to divide in our value by. All right, now in the next case is whenever you're doing the, when you're condensing, we basically want to follow you know, our rules of operations, do the product rule, do the quotient rule. We always want to work from left to right. Unless we see some parentheses, we're always going to work from left to right. So my first expression here is going to be multiplying. So I'm going to basically have 9x times 4x, which is going to be 36x. So I have ln of 36x minus ln of 2x minus 1. Well, now I have the quotient property. So I'm just going to rewrite this as 1 by dividing 2x minus 1 from 36x. So my final answer is ln of 36x all divided by 2x minus 1. And again, that's going to be a base e, but that's going to be your final simplified uh, answer there. All right, so let's go over to this one. Um, oh, I guess I didn't write in, I didn't leave myself some space here, did I? Mm. All right, well, I guess we'll try to get to this here as quickly as possible. Hopefully I can. Um, so in this case, again, well, let's just try to simplify this as much as possible. So the first thing. I want you to understand is, again, we can bring up our powers. So let's bring up our powers, and then let's divide here. So therefore, this can be written as log base 2 of x cubed divided by y. And that's going to be plus log base 2 of z to the 1 half power. Right? So I applied the quotient property, and I bought the 3 up there. So I'm just going to do a couple steps. Now, we can combine these by multiplication, but it's very important for you to understand that z to the 1 half power is, again, the same thing as using a radical. So don't forget you know, our powers are radicals here. Here's a, just another order of operation. Remember, if you have x to the m over n, that's equal to the nth root of x to the m. So that's another property we just don't want to forget about. So therefore, now I'm going to be multiplying this. Now remember, if you're multiplying this times this fraction, just like if you're multiplying um, 3 times you know, 4 over 1, you're going to multiply the 3 times the 4, not times both of them or not times the 1, because that 3 is technically in the numerator. So therefore, the z to the 1 half is going to be in the numerator, so it's going to be multiplied by this x cubed. However, my final simplified condensed form is going to be log base 2 of x cubed, the square root of z, divided by y. And that would be my um, final answer there. Over in here, you might want to uh, replace this and then rewrite this as the cube root. So in reality, I'll rewrite this as log base 5 of 4 plus log base 5 of x to the 2 thirds. It might be helpful then to realize that's log base 5 of 4 plus log base the cube root of x squared. Now you can see that you're multiplying them. So you're going to multiply 4 times that to give you your final logarithmic expression, which is log base 5 of 4 times the cube root of x squared. OK, so that's kind of how the um, ration, or that's kind of how those rational powers, they're going to, we want to simplify them, use them as the cube roots. Our, our, our square roots, you know, for instance, because remember, that's just going to be a square up in there. Um, all right, now in this case, you can see we have parentheses. So whenever you see parentheses, make sure you use the parentheses first. That's just really, really helpful and important um, because, right, uh, OK. So it's different because as you work from left to right, what you can see is the problem is going to be totally different as far as what you multiply and what you add. If you look at these terms, you know, how you're multiplying and, and dividing things together really matters going left to right. It really does make a difference. So if you're giving your parentheses, because usually we would multiply these and then divide by this. But since the parentheses tells us to divide these two first, that's what we're going to want to simplify. 
So therefore, I will rewrite this, though. That's going to be, that's going to be two, uh, 3 squared, so that's technically be, going to be a 9. So to save, to kind of do a step here, that's going to be 3 squared. Actually, you know what? I'll have time here. Because this is going to be log base 4 of x to the 7th minus log base 4 of y to the 4th. OK, now we need to divide those. So therefore, this is going to be log base 4 of 9 plus log base 4 of division of these is going to be x to the 7th over y to the 4th. Then to multiply these, again, that 9 is, is over 1. So as I multiply these, it's going to be 9 times x to the 7th and 1 times y to the 4th. So my final answer is log base 4 of 9 x to the 7th divided by y to the 4th. And there you go. All right, the last one, one of my favorites, is the division and the division. So this one just, again, gets you a lot of practice. Um, again, work from left to right, all right? But the first step, I think, is always just to um, let's go ahead and rewrite them as powers. So I have ln of 2 cubed minus ln of x cubed minus ln of x to the fourth. Okay. Now, working from left to right, I'm going to divide these two. Well, 2 cubed is 8, so therefore 8 um, divided by x cubed. So therefore, this is going to be ln of 8 divided by x cubed. And that's minus ln of x to the fourth. Okay. Now, technically here, we're going to have to divide this once again. So therefore, I have ln of 8 divided by x cubed divided by x to the fourth. Now, this one gets a lot of students because they're like, how do I do? What do I do in here now? Well, the main important thing here is when you have a fraction divided by a fraction, for instance, if I had you know, 1 third divided by 1 fourth, what do you do? The way that I always teach my students is multiply by the reciprocal on the top and the bottom. Therefore, any number multiplied by a reciprocal multiplies to 1, and you're left with 4 over 3. So in this case, I can basically put my x to the fourth over 1 and then multiply by the reciprocal on the top and the bottom. And by multiplying by 1 over x to the fourth on both of these, hello, I now obtain my final answer, which is ln of 8 divided by x. Now remember, when you're multiplying these, you've got to add the powers. So that's going to be x to the seventh power. Yeah. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you use the rules of exponents to condense a logarithmic expression. Thanks.